Hello there, this is Ron Wills coming back at you with yet another video. You know what, I'm going to follow that. I'm going to do one last uh, Good Bar video. Um, and I mentioned, I think I mentioned in the comments, uh, or somebody's comment, I think it was uh, a comment to uh, the Master Teachers video, uh, Black Gnostic Speaks video on Alpha Males, that I have an unpublished manuscript called being mr good bar and it was, it was more personalized it was it was combination i would call it creative nonfiction. and see y'all don't know it's uh if i had my if i had my druthers i'll just be writing like fiction books and scripts all day and trust me i plan to still do that so you know check out check out some uh, fiction work you know check out starting from zero check out those eyes and also check out uh the same coffins Anyway, and just go to my website. Just go to the link on my website. You can find all my stuff. But this was, uh, I didn't, uh, I just didn't publish this one, to be honest. Uh, one, because <laughs> I dated too many attorneys. <laughs> and two, you know what? I didn't, I wouldn't, I'm going to be honest with y'all. I mean, even bigger than that, because I know how to get around the attorneys. Um, I wasn't sure how receptive uh, people would be to it. So, you know, sometimes you got, you'll, you'll work on something and then you just like, oh, will it sell? Hmm. You know, will people be receptive? Because there's only a small population, there's a small, there's a small population of men who will eat it up. But the rest might be like, they might be getting the shotguns out. So, <laughs> but um, what I want to do, I want to just read, have a little bit of fun today. You know, everything don't have to be all serious and shit. Plus, I got some, uh, you know, I got somebody said I had a little bit of a poet in me. I'm like, no, nah, I'm just a creative writer. Anyway, I'm going to read some excerpts from uh, being Mr. Goodbar. All right. Have a little fun today. You know, sit back and relax. I, th I think some of, you know, some of my lady fans, you know, all three of them, they might like this. Anyway, let me go. Um. The first uh, excerpt, the first excerpt is a. Uh, I'll start out. It's called foreplay. All right, let me read it. Let me let me get in the mood. I, I ain't gonna be like panting or like, you know, like my brother Obsidian would do. <laughs> I ain't doing all that. But let me get in the mood when I read this. All right, foreplay. I sat naked in contemplation. In my solitude, I inhale frankincense and myrrh, purifying my very essence as the dark energy of a week's activity rolls away from my body and into the ethers as candles flickered in the background. Jazz played as Pat Metheny's The Truth Will Always Be reaches crescendo. I loved how it built slowly, like a climbing mountain, like a woman's orgasm, slow and steady until there is an explosion. I slowly rose from my meditation and walked into my bedroom to look at myself in the mirror. I reflected on the features that enticed my companion for the evening. I looked at the smooth chocolate skin, the bald head, and the curly eyelashes that seemed to defy gravity as they went out and up. I gazed upon the high cheekbones and the jawline that projected a strong masculinity which aroused the feminine nature in the women who beheld my visage. Finally, I looked at the pointed nose, which was a throwback to a remote European ancestor, and my full lips, which are definitely African. I continued to marvel at myself as I gazed upon my physique, a true work of art created through years of sports and weight training. Am I conceited? The ladies thought so at times, but they still loved my flavor. I wasn't conceited, though. I just thought highly of myself. I went into my closet to pick a apparel which amplified my natural energy. It was still relatively cool out being late March. I decided on a black cotton long sleeve muscle sweater. I combined this with light with a light charcoal gray suit. I got dressed and put on my favorite pair of shoes. I looked at myself in the mirror once more before I left my apartment. I walked through the halls of my building passing by a beautiful young lady from Africa. We said hi to each other as we've done the past for the past few months. Our auras flirted and tasted each other as they entwined in an ethereal embrace. Ironically, we didn't know each other's name, as I had seen her in the company of the same bland male of obvious bourgeois upbringing, and she has seen a stream of female companions making their pilgrimage to my small corner of the world. 
We saw their desire in each other's eyes, but its consummation could only play out on the astral plane. One day, perhaps, when the stars were aligned, we could manifest on a physical plane that which has occurred several times on the level of pure thought. I walked to my Corvette and climbed in to begin a journey to meet my latest pair of more. We had met as we walked back to my office after lunch. She was ahead of me initially. She had come out of a restaurant walking with a sense of purpose. As I watched her, she projected the ultimate combination of femininity and power. She was at the place where yin and yang meet. I was content to simply admire her and bask in her energy when she looked back and her gaze lingered on me for what seemed like an eternity but was merely a second. Our eyes locked in a seeming instant where we communicated on a subliminal level. Nothing was said. Everything was understood. The mating ritual had begun. She turned away and her pace began to slow. Her balance of yin and yang began to tip more towards yin. The power in her lovely legs began their song as they beckoned me closer. Her business suit, which projected her yang energy a mere moment ago, began to project yin energy as her skirt exposed enough of her thighs a lure for someone to ignite her passion. As her yin became stronger, my yang went out to her. Yet I reined in on the beast within. I maintained my pace, silently communicating that my fire was under my control and direction, letting her know that she had indeed chosen correctly. I caught up with her as she waited to cross the street. I asked her how her day was. She said she was tired from working on a project with a pending deadline. Then she continued to talk as we crossed the street as if we were old friends. Perhaps we were in a past life. We exchanged numbers and talked later that night. Our conversation was merely a continuation of the foreplay begun when she had chose me earlier. We made a date to get together to go dancing consciously, yet within the depths of our soul, we knew we would eventually be in an erotic embrace. I picked her up at her place later that week. She was beautiful in an indigo mini dress, the power of her legs enhanced by silk stockings and mules. As we drove, we continued our verbal foreplay. She soaked in my energy as I looked at her with eyes that pierced down to the very essence of her soul. She gasped briefly as she struggled to regain her composure. We went out to one of the hottest clubs in town. The place was full of sensuous sights, sounds, and smells. We wasted little time as we headed right to the dance floor. We were in our own world as our bodies settled into rhythmic movements of touching and grinding. We were like this for an hour, taking our foreplay to yet another plateau. We left the club and drove her to her townhouse. Sexual tension was thick. We got in her door and began to kiss with a passionate fervor that astounded even my jaded sensibilities. We took off our clothes in her living room as we caressed and explored each other's body. Suddenly, she stopped and took my head in her hands. She looked silently into my eyes, feeling the power lurking behind them. She communicated her surrender to my power as I picked her up and carried her to the bedroom as our days long foreplay came to its final act. Okay, I got a pen. <laughs> <laughs> I had to do that. <laughs> That's a shout out to Obsidian. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> oh man. Anyway, man, let me give y'all another chapter. Um, damn, there ain't a lot. Let me let me get into some of it because you know I talk about some um, adventures as best as I could. But um, let me read this one chapter I did in here. Um, hold on. I got a lot in here. Maybe I do need to publish this joint. I don't know. Y'all let me know what y'all think after y'all hear some of these exploits and stuff. I'm going to talk. I did a chapter called Infidelity because I'm going to tell y'all something now. I'm, I'm not proud of this, but, you know, just let you know I wasn't no angel and stuff. Like a significant amount of the women I had had men or boyfriends and stuff. I don't know if they had husbands because a boyfriend might just get pissed and break up with a woman and a husband come after you. So I think I avoided that. But if a woman going to lie to me, I mean to her mate, she could lie to me easily, you know, even though she might be more honest. So I don't know. So anyway, here's, here's another chapter. It's called Infidelity. Infidelity. All right. Many things I saw as Mr. Goodbar, knowing full well others saw as well. 
but ignored the reality as a business executive ignores the reality of the homeless man in front of his office building. The, re re the reality I speak of and that which people chose to ignore or pretend doesn't exist is that of unfaithful women. There was a time I wanted to ignore this reality as well regarding the few women I knew cheated on their mates as anomalies rather than the norm. Such was the naivete of my younger years. Mr. Goodbar sees with different eyes than this Mr. Goodbar sees with his third eye. I wonder how many women I have been intimate with had another man they paraded publicly as they wanted only while we sweated in a motel on the outskirts of the city. Was it 50%? 60? 70? 80? 90? Perhaps the question should be not how many of them had boyfriends or maybe even husbands, but rather how many didn't have a publicly acknowledged significant other. For a long time, such encounters didn't betray my code of conduct as their men were their problems and not mine. Whatever the requisite lie they told their men was not their business, was not my business. I only needed to know when to call, when to show up, and when to act like I didn't know her. How many times have I been the other man, giving women delights their public paramours were unable or unwilling to provide? So many times as their faces and names blur in my memory. With one of her hardworking men couldn't indulge her wish to dance and party. She saw something in me as we sat at the subway station waiting for our rush hour train. She said she wouldn't understand, he wouldn't understand her need to express herself with other men on the dance floor. Apparently not in a parking lot either as I grinded her against my car beginning foreplay which would culminate on her living room couch. Her bed was reserved for a man who would arrive at her apartment two hours after I climaxed. With another, it was on the rooftop of a university's parking garage. For her, the element of danger was her aphrodisiac as she provided oral stimulation in broad daylight stripped to the underwear bearing the color of her well-known sorority. She was a steady partner over the years as I provided adventure as a counterbalance to her otherwise buffy existence. With her, though, I might have been one of many as a would-be future husband toiled in a corporate office working for his piece of the American dream. Sometimes it would be a brief affair as one would break up front with her man as he failed to answer her ultimatum of marriage or else. I gave her one more chance at guilt-free sex before her man concluded that he wasn't a player he thought he was and decided marriage wasn't such a bad idea. So many women, so many circumstances. I began to become wary of playing the game with another man's woman. It wasn't that someone's man ever confronted me. Women are very good at cheating. She has her ingenuity and the man's ego on her side. A woman can fix, can fix her husband's breakfast in the morning, get him off to work and the children off to school. The man and children are barely gone for five minutes when she gets in her car to ostensibly run errands but somehow ends up in a small apartment 20 miles outside the city with a man of bulging muscles and Olympian stamina. After her fill of him in more ways than one, she is back home with the afternoon stack ready, snack ready for the children and the beginning of dinner for her husband. He is none the wiser as his ego tells him she is truly his woman even though they only have sex once a week and she's always running errands. One thing to realize is that men and women cheat differently. When men cheat, they will take their women out on the town, especially if she's a pretty young, hot thing. His ego swells as other men look on in jealousy. Yes, he is the man until his wife gets a phone call from a friend asking why was a husband out with a girl half his age. Women, on the other hand, keep their affairs private. They only need the man for one thing, and this is easily accomplished in a hotel or apartment, for the truly bold in her living room while her man is away. I became disgusted, not so much because they cheated on devoted men, but how easily they would do so. It didn't require verbal enticement on my part, no showing in, or, nor showing the inadequacies of their men. Most often, it was simply being available and down for whatever. Some cheated so easily, I would be surprised they would mention that they did indeed have a mate. Many of my brethren have re regaled me with similar tales. Even when I began to scream for women with men, some would slip through the barriers as the omission of truth came easily in their pursuit of the intoxication I represented. She was beautiful, a doctoral student with the body and confidence of an exotic dancer. She was stimulating both mentally and physically. She had a grasp of politics and history that impressed me as I was used to conversations full of sexual innuendo. We were having a good time when she decided to be upfront about her relationship situation. I have a boyfriend back home, she told me apologetically. My happy mood faded. Why didn't you tell me before we went out? You wouldn't have wanted to go out with me. I shook my head as I thought about what to do with it. She did have a nice booty. It wouldn't be the first time I got with another man's woman. Honestly, many women are hypocrites. 
they they fill hotel ballrooms to hear about how why, how and why men cheat, but they never publicly want their own actions to face scrutiny. The cheating man is not getting with another man. The DL brothers being a tiny exception. Regardless of the cheating man, what's said about the woman who cheats on her mate? They can pretend otherwise, but my brethren and I know what's up. Hmm. Wow. Let me give y'all one more. Let me give y'all one more. And let me know what y'all think, seriously. You know, maybe I'll publish this joint. I don't know. Or, you know, maybe I'll publish it in a form. I don't know. We'll see. Maybe I'll fictionalize some stuff. That's the best way to protect me from um, some vengeful ass attorneys who uh, had a good, had a good, who had great dome games. I'll put it like that. Anyway, okay, this last excerpt is called Power. Cause you know what I'm, I'm a, and I and I said this on my private group. Ultimately, sex appeal in a man is about power, and that's what this is all about: having the options, having the power to get what you want. So, and that's you know. That's one thing I've always had. It's more or less yes or no. You know, just knowing I can always go out there and get something. It's like I can chill out. Anyway, let me read this last part. Power. It was Monday morning. I prepared for another sojourn into the land of make-believe, which others called a regular work week. I saw the same people who were into naughty lifestyles on the weekends put on business suits and a facade of respectability. I prepared to dive into this sea of smoke and mirrors. It started at the bus stop as women young and old of all races sent streamers of energy my way to fill me out. Their faces were in passive masks as they stared into space or into reading material. Their body language communicated their interest. A couple of them I considered rewarding with my favor. I did so on numerous occasions as the outdoor bus stand served a better purpose than a popular nightclub. I felt the same energy when I got on the bus as a lady driver said hi to me and told me the fare was on her. Having a way with the ladies has its economic benefits. The bus dropped me off as I thanked the driver and she said, you're welcome in a seductive tone. It was both flattering and annoying. Sometimes I wished they didn't look at me like that. I wanted to chill sometimes. I walked several blocks to my job. My path took me through a small park where many squirrels moved about. I stopped for a minute to observe their play. Relaxation for me was sitting in a park with a breeze blowing and birds singing. My senses were tuned to everything from the tiniest ant to the swaying of the largest tree. It took me out of the rhythm of my life and into the rhythm of the infinite. I returned to the park that evening after work and took a seat on the bench. I reflected on my life. My mind drifted to the numerous encounters I had with women up to that point. I thought about every single one from adolescent crushes to heart-tearing rejections to platonic friendships to torrid affairs. A lifetime of memories compressed into a few moments on a park bench. I thought about who I was and who I, who I had become. I reflected on my place in a sexual hierarchy. Then in a flash I thought about power. I had power in a sexual jungle. Very few people sat where I sat. Most people are not with their hearts desire, settling instead for someone acceptable to family and friends. I've seen women settle for men who could not stroke their carnal fire but had the qualification of a good job and respectable appearance. I'd seen men who liked sexual magnetism and had meager finances settle for women of mild attractiveness and mean dispositions. Women who were angry at Mr. Goodbar's rejection and took it out on those unfortunate men who were only guilty of wanting to be in a loving relationship. My lot in life was different. I had the power of choice. Zero tolerance was my policy. If one woman chose to play a game, I simply kicked her to the curb as the waiting list for my affections grew by the week. If I didn't like a comment or maybe her dress didn't hang quite right, I simply moved her to the bottom of the rotation. It was a powerful feeling. As Mr. Goodbar had my choice of women, I was like a rich kid in a candy store. Was I feeling the prim and pro proper sister who just moved into the building? Maybe for a bit. Bourgeois Morris drove me up a wall. She had nice legs, though. I can put up with her for a minute as I find a woman below the mask to be quite imaginative. The sister at the coffee shop had, had a little something. Her unpolished ways could help me pass an evening, too. Nah, she has too many stars in her eyes. Plus, I wasn't feeling her neighborhood. Quite frankly, didn't want her to know where I lived. Maybe I'll kick it with the Korean girl who gives me a discount at her deli. Where else could I get a $10 meal for $1.50? The young cleaning woman from El Salvador is a possibility. She saved her prettiest smiles for me. Too bad I, don't, I didn't speak Spanish. Still, some things were understood beyond verbal communication. Who it was gave me great power. I had the power to make the best choice of who I would spend my time with. I would never have to settle for anything. That's it, y'all. 
yeah let me know what y'all think yeah, maybe i'll put it out there it's still there you know and i i even though i said about the attorneys the thing is my thing is i'm you know you just got some haters out there you know a lot of guys don't want to hear that women really ain't that much of a problem even with these videos and stuff is you know i'm really just speaking for other men because if i spoke on my personal preference shoot if i spoke on my personal preference oh shoot my personal issues uh with women biggest issue is uh women get annoying and stuff when they just won't leave and shit after you have sex with them <laughs> to be honest or they get aggressive when they choosing and stuff and they like you trying to tell them you trying to chill and they they trying to like hang out with your ass anyway but those are the biggest issues like personally but a lot of these videos i do is really just speaking up because quite frankly somebody can and I'm not easily dis I'm just being I'm not being conceited when I say this. Women can't dismiss me easily. They can't dismiss it. They can't just say, "Oh, are you this or you that." They can't, cause I got something for anybody who got something to say. But here's the thing, and this might be a whole nother video, but I'll just say this. One of the concerns I have is my sons. My sons are going to be more in that nerdy thing. Well, the oldest one anyway. The youngest one probably be a pimp. The you know, so they're going to be nerdy. they more on an intellectual thing, you know. Older son want to, like, A, play video games. B, design video games. They're like, dude's like a mathematical genius and whatnot. I'll be using them to calculate stuff just for fun. I just throw out numbers to him. He'd be hitting it back with me. You know, and I thought about that. It was like, hold up. it, it Stuff changed, you know. Yeah, you know, all of a sudden shit got personal. You know, yeah, you know, those sons pop out, your boys pop out, you want to teach them the best, so you gotta let them know the game. You know? And I already seen some little girls scheming on both my sons. You know, so I gotta worry about making sure, uh, you know, some little girl don't try to uh you know, have some pretty babies or something, because both my sons are little pretty Rickies too. But, you know, I want them to know it. And, you know, I thought about it. A lot of young guys really need something. And, you know, so a lot of everything what I'm saying is is trying to help somebody. You know, like I said, I, didn't, <laughs> I wasn't a saint when I was younger. And I don't tell anybody. I tell you straight up. I advocate for good guys, but uh, to be honest with y'all, y'all might have been talking trash about me if I kept on the same path. <laughs> I'd be one of those YouTubers y'all hate. I ain't going to lie. I'd, I'd be in there with the relationship pimps because I straight up pimp some women uh, on telling them what they want to hear. But, I, you know, with integrity, I can't do that because I have to do my part to create an environment so, you know, kids like my sons who just want to sit back and chill ain't trying to be, you know, Mr. Joe Cool. They can, they can find, you know, decent women. Then they can deal with decent women because, you know, there's an argument whether or not this generation can be saved, my generation or one after me, but, you know, we, we know the mistakes. So I do that, I do what I do for my sons and other boys like them. And I do a lot of informal mentoring now. I talk to a lot of young guys, I mean, you know, especially a lot of guys under the age of 30. Talk to a lot of people, seriously. So, you know, that's my story. And like I said, let me know. Maybe I'll, you know, cause being Mr. Goodbar, I can put that out in a week. I can honestly put that shit out in a week because the shit's ready to go and I got the publishing system set up. All I had to do was just punch it in, you know, you know, find one of my pictures and put it on there. So anyway, that's it for today. I'll talk to y'all later. Peace.